السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. جمعة مباركة to everybody. Some uh, few announcements for today, October 14th, 2016, the 13th of Muharram, 1438. Tonight is family Ummah night. Plan to be back here at the masjid by Maghrib time for spiritual talks. Meet and greet the members of the executive committee of the masjid and pizza will be available for everybody. The Heart, Mind and Soul Society will be meeting this Sunday. Seniors and their families are encouraged to join from 10 to 12. This Sunday, Sister Zoe will be encouraging seniors to get better educated on some of the local propositions that may be of interest to them. Starting next Friday, we have many events throughout the weekend. Starting with, uh, with Friday, October 21st, plan to attend the Candidates Forum. Learn about the individuals who are running for local office. That's next Friday immediately after Maghrib. Again, the Candidates Forum next Friday immediately after Maghrib. In keeping with our efforts to help the community become better informed, of their civic duties, ISOC is co in cooperation with Bayan Claremont is pleased to host a symposium to encourage Muslim political engagement. Speakers include Dr. Siddiqui, Sister Dalia Mujahid. This half-day symposium is not about candidates. It's more about effective strategies from the perspective of the Muslim leadership. That will be on Sunday, October 30th. ISOC does not and cannot endorse any candidates, but we encourage you to become familiar with the issues. And remember, the last day to register to vote is coming up very, very soon. The last day to register to vote is October 24th. There's a registration table outside. If you would like to take care of that today, stop by the booth outside. Then, next Saturday, October 22nd, Dr. Karim Abdullah from the Seattle Healing Arts Center will be visiting ISOC. And that will be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. He will be available to speak with families privately about their health issues and concerns. Dr. Abdullah is a specialist in natural medicine and remedies. Please stop by the office if you would like to reserve a time spot to speak with Dr. Abdullah. Again, that's Saturday, October 22nd. Save the date. October, Sunday, October 23rd is our annual Open Mosque Day. Please invite your non-Muslim neighbors, friends, and colleagues to visit the masjid and have an opportunity to learn firsthand about Islam and Muslims. The program will include talks with Dr. Siddiqui and an opportunity to meet Sister Thaymoon Ahmed, author of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Mary. It's a simple and easy read book that attempts to remove the misconceptions that often give rise to Islamophobia. ISOC is pleased to announce the third annual OC Halal Food Fest. That will be on Saturday, November 5th. Vendor inquiries are welcome. As always, if you have double parked, please move your car immediately after the prayer. Double parking is allowed for only a short time, a short period of time. You should not inconvenience others. The policy to tow away cars is still in effect. Please do not park at Hill School. Also, please do not park in fire lanes or the yellow no parking zones. Jazakum la khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. 
الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وإن خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise for Allah سبحانه وتعالى and peace and blessings upon his prophets and messengers all the prophets and messengers of Allah from Adam alayhi salam to the last <coughs> to the last and final prophet Muhammad 
Salawatu Allahi wa salamu alayhi wa alayhi majma'een I bear witness that there is no God except Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad Salawatu Allahi wa salamu alayhi is last and final prophet and messenger <laughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in one of the ahadith and Abi Mas'ud al-Badri radiyallahu an qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam إن مما أدرك الناس من كلام النبوة الأولى إذا لم تستحي فصنع ما شئت رواه البخاري. The Prophet said some of the teachings of the earlier prophets, earliest teachings that have still there among the people has reached to the people, and that is if you are not ashamed. Do whatever you want. إذا لم تستحي فصنع ما شئت. So haya is a very important ethical and moral principle. It is from time immemorial the message of the prophets of Allah. All prophets reminded their people to observe haya. And uh, the word haya comes from the same root from which we have the word hayat, life. That means the people should live with haya. This should be part of their life. Haya means modesty, shame, shyness. Haya means self-respect. Haya is a kind of embarrassment that a person should feel when thinking of doing something bad or saying something bad. Islam emphasizes very much the principle of haya. Actually, the Prophet ﷺ said in one of the hadith, he said, this is part of Iman. There is a hadith that is reported by Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, very authentic hadith, in which Rasulullah ﷺ said, الإيمان بضع وسبعون شعبة، and some hadith say بضع وستون شعبة. إيمان has more than seventy or sixty branches. علىها لا إله إلا الله. so إيمان has various aspects, branches. and the highest aspect of إيمان is لا إله إلا الله. to believe in one God. توحيد that is the highest branch. وَأَدْنَاهَا إِمَاتَةُ الْأَذَى عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ And one of the common principles of Iman is that you remove the obstacles from the road. That if you see something that may hurt people, you remove it. And this will be part of your Iman. So Iman is believe in Allah, recognize there is only one God, and Iman is also to be concerned about other human beings and people, and not just human beings, any being. Nobody should get hurt. So, Iman bil khaliq wa arrifqu bil makhluq. Faith in the Creator and kindness toward the creation. And then the Prophet said, Wal haya u shu'batum min al Iman. And haya is a branch of iman, is a, is a part of iman. And especially in Islam, the Prophet said that inna likulli deenin khuluqan wa khuluqul islam al haya. Every religion has a special character. And the character of Islam is haya. Now, I'm talking about this subject because as you know, for the last few days, the U.S. media and the world media is busy talking about uh, the revelation of some tapes, uh, lewd tapes, shameful tapes uh, of conversation of one of the top candidates who is running for the highest office for our country. And uh, both of the major ca candidates, they have been talking to each other 
and telling each other to be ashamed of. One is talking about his dealings with the females, and the other is talking about her dealing with the emails. So both are telling them to be ashamed of, to be ashamed of. So whether it is, we, um, my subject is not about the candidate. My subject is not about the tapes. But my subject is that what we should learn and what message we have for ourselves, for our youth, and especially for our countrymen, the American, American people at large. We have to emphasize that people should know how to discipline themselves. There's too much talk about freedom of expression. And any time you say something, you say, it's freedom of expression. Now, freedom of expression can lead people and mislead people. So there has to be decency. There has to be civilization. There has to be culture. And people have to learn how to control themselves. The self-control, self-discipline is good for them. And not everything that comes to your mouth, you say it. But you have to observe certain limits. Islam says there is no such thing as you can talk. There is a, in locker room you can talk whatever you want to talk. There is no ethics of locker room. There is no special privilege for any group that they can talk and they can say but other people cannot say. So bad words have to be stopped. Bad words should not be used. Obscenity should not be used. And there should be respect of males and females. There should be respect of all people. There should be respect of the people of other faith. There should be respect of your neighbors, people of other races, other colors. And people should have haya. People should have some kind of a decency. And this decency is a very important aspect of civilization and culture. And if people talk about that, we are civilized people, we are this, we are that. But the point is that you have to have some civilization in your conversation. So one should avoid that. In Islam, Islam says you should be bold. You should have courage. But when it comes to the matter of truth, when it comes to the matter of haqq, inna Allah la yasti'ani al haqq. So there is no haya from haqq. There is no haya from learning. The Prophet said, May Allah bless the women of Quraysh. They were very, they had a lot of haya, but it did not stop them from learning. They used to come to the Prophet and ask questions. So they were not shy of asking questions. So a student, if he is timid and is not going to ask questions to his teacher, or to her teacher, not going to learn. So you should be, you should be open, you should ask questions and learn. But there is a, the haya should be from sin. Haya should be something which is bad, which is something wrong. People should have haya. We should be shy of doing that. One should not say that this is part of the boldness, that I can do whatever I want. This is part of my courage. No, that courage is wrong. So this is the bad aspect of haya. This is the bad aspect as as aspect of shyness. Shyness is good, but sometimes it can be also bad. And the badness is that when somebody is shy from learning, from seeking knowledge, but the good thing is that one is shy from doing wrong things, avoiding sin. And our ulama say that there should be three aspects of haya. One is the haya from with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your relation with Allah. The third thing is haya with your own self. Al haya um al nafs. Al haya um al Allah. Al haya um al nafs. Haya in your relation with your own self. And the third is al haya um al nas. Haya in your relation with other people. Now haya um al Allah. Feeling some kind of a shyness in your relation with Allah. Now the point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest benefactor. Allah is merciful, kind. Allah is the one who is gracious. Allah is the one upon whom we depend. 
our food and drink, our life, everything that we have is because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now your own parent, you would not do wrong in front of them because you respect your parents. You would not do wrong in front of your spouses. You would not do wrong in front of your children, in front of your friends because you respect them. And you, but you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything and Allah is seeing everything. So if you are aware of that Allah is watching me, how can you do something against Allah, against the command of Allah? You have some kind of a shyness, shame, feeling ashamed that I'm doing this and Allah is watching me. In front of him I'm doing that. That's called ahaya ma'Allah. Anytime you commit a sin or you feel like doing a sin, you should see that Allah is watching me. And he is the one who is so kind to me. He created me. He has given me my life. I'm breathing because of him. I'm eating my food, my drink, my clothes, my home, my family, and all of this is because of Allah. And I'm disobeying him. I'm going against him. So there should be some kind of a shyness. There is some kind of a shame. How can, be a sh how can I do something against my benefactor, my creator? The one upon whom I depend. The second thing is that hayaw ma'an nafs. That is haya with your own self. Haya with your own self is that you should have a sense of self-dignity, self-honor. A person who is self-honor will not do anything bad. He could not utter a word. Even if I, when, when that person is alone. Because he, should, he or she should have self-respect. How can I do something? And a Muslim also has to understand that our hands, our feet, our body, our skin, everything is watching us. They are all witnesses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are with everyone. And they are also watching. And they are taking a record of everything. So how can you do something? How can you say something? When you know that all of these are going to stand as a witness, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fussilat, "Wama kuntum tastatirun an yashad alaykum sam'ukum wa la absarukum wa la junudukum wa lakin zanantum an Allah la yalamu kasiram min ma taamalun wa zalikum zannukum wa ladi zanantum bi Rabbikum ardaqum fa asbahtum min al khasirin." You did not try to hide yourself from your ears, from your eyes, from your skin to testify against you. You thought that Allah does not know much of what you do. And this thought of yours has destroyed you. And this thought of yours has destroyed you, has brought you to ruin. فَأَصْبَحْتُ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And so you became the losers. So if, order, if somebody has a self-respect, and people do a lot of things for their own reputation. If somebody say, gave bad name or says something bad, you try to say, you are ruining my reputation, you are defaming me. People often take people to the court for defamation. But what about your own self? You are defaming your own self. In front of your own self, in front of your body, your own hand and your feet. So one has to be shy of that. al ma'an nafs. And the third thing is, al ma'an nas. That in front of the people don't do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive you. And if you do repentance, that is assurance of forgiveness, inshallah. If there is sincere repentance, Allah will forgive. But people don't forgive. Some of them, they, they, they may forgive, but others may not. Some of them may accept your excuse, but others will not accept your excuse. And this is something that is, people have to be concerned about that. And often, 
the words that we say we do not pay much attention but these words become our record in front of the people so you whatever you say whatever you write in your twitter in your emails in your social media on your facebook all is this your your record and this is in front of the people and then after that once it is gone it, you cannot retract it people say it the words are yours as long as they are with you as when it are where they are then they belong to others then in the hand of others so one has to be extremely careful what you say what you do and this is a sense of responsibility sense of responsibility to oneself before allah and for the people this is the concept of haya now islam also emphasizes that haya especially in the male and female relations this is extremely important and today people are not paying much attention to that this has become the least observed principle people have lost the sense of haya between male and female relations and islam emphasizes very much because ifa the purity of life on which depend social life on which especially depend the family life your family life cannot be remain strong if there is no ifa if there is no purity so male and female both of them have to observe that islam has given us certain principles certain rules the first thing is qul lil mu'minina yaghuddu min absarihim wa yahfuzu furujahum qul lil mu'minati yaghuddna min absarihin wa yahfuzna furujahum say to believing men lower your gaze lower your gaze say to the believing women lower your gaze because your eyes is saham min sahum min saham shaitan it is an arrow of the arrow of shaitan so you have to be careful when you are yes you can meet, talk to male and female can talk to each other they can meet each other but at the same time observe certain etiquettes certain principles and these rules are yaghuddu min absarihim min absarihim no allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say yaghuddu absarihum do not look at it at all la min absarihim some of your gaze that means as any time you have feeling that something is wrong don't you get control yourself be proper in that yaghuddu min absarihim wa yahfuzu furujahum and guard your chastity the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in one of the hadith he said man zamana li ma bayna lihyahi wa rijlihi dhamantu lahu aljanna If somebody gives me assurance of that between his two two jaws and that which is between his two legs I give him the assurance of jannah So the words are very important and the privacy is very important Observe your privacy Qul lil mu'mina yaghuddu min afsarihim wa yahfuzu furujahum And then Islam gave us beauty of Islam is that Islam does not leave things just abstract Islam explained them and said that you put proper dress so male and female both of them have to cover themselves properly so there is there is no special islamic dress but islamic dress has certain parameters certain principles certain values so whatever you wear you should cover your body properly you should not expose parts of your body especially sawatim that is your private parts have to be covered properly and we have to teach that so proper dress for women especially allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wal yadrabna bi khumurihin ala juyubihin yudnin alayhinna min jalabi bihin surah an-nur and surah an-nisa and surah al-ahzab both of them mention that that is they go with the hijab cover themselves when they are outside Islam says that you are at home at home of course you are free to wear whatever you like but especially if you are home you have children other relatives 
then you have to cover them so you dress properly. If you are mahram, of course there is no hijab in front of the mahram. But other people, you have to cover yourself properly. And teach your children that they should also from the very early age know how to cover themselves. When they go to the toilet, let them close the door. You're not sitting in front of everybody, not walking in the, in the home naked. This is something that you can teach them from the very beginning. Islam says that when your children are at home, they should knock at the door before they come to your room. Especially at three times when you are taking rest. So when husband and wife are in bed, there should be some way of reminding the children, telling them that knock at the door. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu li yastazinkum al ladhina malakat aymanukum wal ladhina dhambi bakul huluma minkum salasa marrat min qabli salatil fajr wa hina tada'una siyabakum min al-zahira wa min ba'da salatil aisha salasa awarati lakum wa you believe let your people at your home malakat aymanukum your workers and those children who have not reached to the age of puberty, young children, they should take permission three times when they come to your chamber, when you come to your room. Before Salatul Fajr, at noon time, if you take rest, and after the Aisha prayer. Because you are in your own privacy. Three times of privacy for you. So this, this, this is the etiquette. These are the etiquettes of Haya. These are the etiquettes by which people should live. And if they live with that, this kind of, the words are good, the relations are good, female and male relations are good, then you can see that people will not be embarrassed. People will not be ashamed. And people will live a life of dignity and honor. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us on the right path and bless us. Wa akhuru da'wana anil alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala siyyid al-mursaleen. نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين. I want to emphasize very much that those of you who are eligible to vote, you should take use of that and do not neglect this duty. It is very important. Use your conscience. We don't endorse any candidate, but use your conscience. And, and, and vote for the right person. And what mean by right person? The person who is good for Muslims. And there is nothing to be ashamed of. Blacks are saying somebody for their interest. Latinos are saying somebody for their interest. Whites are saying for somebody for their interest. Jews are saying for somebody for their interest. So we Muslims say something for our interest. And the second thing, somebody who is working for the good of the country because we are citizens in the country and we want good for the country somebody good for the country the right candidate you have to see what they are saying what kind of their policies are what kind of their plans are and then after that you select that so this is amana and this amana has to be used so you if you are not registered you should register before the time goes and you should know more about these candidates and vote Alhamdulillah, we have this opportunity and we should take it, take advantage of that. And there, Alhamdulillah, society is organizing a special session where we'll be speaking about that. So try to attend that and listen to some. We give opportunity to various candidates to come and speak without endorsing anyone, but we give opportunity to other people so that community become educated community. And if the Muslims are together, united, Six, seven million Muslims, if their votes are united, it will have a lot of effect. 
And not only six, seven millions, actually just few words sometimes make difference. Even few words sometimes. So don't think that your word have, does not count, there's so many people. No, each word is important. And this is the responsibility, so I hope inshallah we'll use that. I pray to Allah SWT to bless us, to bless our community, and to bless uh, the, the country through us inshallah. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين خصوصا على الخلفاء الأربعة أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى السيدان الشهيدين أبي محمد الحسن وأبي عبد الله الحسين وعلى أمهما فاطمة الزهراء وعلى عمه المعزمان المكرمين عند الله والناس الحمزة والعباس وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم إنا نسلك العفو والعافية Please pray for the people of Halab Pray for the people of Mosul Pray for the people of Kashmir Pray for the people of Palestine Pray wherever the people are suffering. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove their suffering, to remove their pain. Allahumma ahfad ikhwanana al-mazlumin. Allahumma ansurhum ya Allah. Allahumma ansurhum ala adaihim. Abbana atina fi dunya hasanahum fi al-akhirati hasanatan waqin azab al-nar. Ibadallah rahmakum Allah. Inna salata tanha'ani al-fashya'i wal-munkar. Wa la zikrullahi akbar faqimu al-salah. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله. استو استو استقيم. Please make straight lines. Be close to each other. الله أكبر. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والتين والزيتون وطور السنين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين <تصفيق> الله 
ارايت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدعو اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون الله اكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله لا إله إلا الله ما لا شريك لا إله إلا الله ما لا شريك We have a request for dua from several people please pray for our sister Amina Ismail mother of Bilad Abdul Hafiz video of uh, our first imam here Hafiz Ismail Rahmanullah uh, Sister Amina is not well she's in the hospital please make, make dua for her health brother Qasim is not well and sister Bilqis Dadabhai she is not well please make dua for all these people um, and people pray for Mahboob uh, um, um, the mother of uh, her name is Khairun Nisa Khanji. Uh, she is in the ICU. Pray for her health. Also pray for uh, Sanjida Khan. Uh, Sanjida, and uh, she has cancer in Italy. Pray for her health. And also for Noor, Noor Khan. She uh, has, a, has a pain. Also pray for um, Shaukat Hussain, who passed away last Thursday while visiting Bangladesh. And we pray for Arif Khalil, who passed away. We had a funeral prayer last week. So pray for all the people who passed away and the people who are not well. Basil Kanaan, yes, we pray for him. May Allah bless him also. Please pray for him. Allahumma shfi mardana wa rahamma wa ta'ana wa akhtim bisaliyati a'malana. اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة والفوضى في الجنة والنجاة من النار رب اغفر ورحمه وانت خير الراحمين وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وآله وأصحابه وأطباعه أجمعين برحمتك يا 